What's up everybody? Welcome back to my kitchen and thank you for coming to check out what Billy B cooking. Uh, today we are doing <laughs> we're doing a, a special recipe. I don't have anything up here right now because uh, we're gonna do this a little different. Uh, today we're doing my sausage, pepper, and potato casserole. Uh, it's sausage, peppers, and potatoes. And it's my onion and I'm throwing in some baby carrots, some baby carrots and I'm throwing some mushrooms because uh, one of my good buddies that I used to work with uh, Rob shout out to you Rob uh, he's moving down to Ocala and uh, we're all gonna miss him but uh, I used to make this uh, casserole sometimes to bring it to work and it was his favorite dish so I told him I said in, uh, in lieu of you leaving I'm gonna make you this dish you can take with you little does he know I ain't giving him the whole dish because I'm eating some of this shit too it's delicious. Um, but uh, it, this dish is easy. It's all about the mise en place. But uh, what that is basically just means have all your stuff prepared ahead of time. So as long as you got all your ingredients prepared, get everything chopped up, you're basically just throwing it in the casserole dish, throwing it in the oven. So anyway, let me, uh, let me get this started. And you'll see my mise en place as I go through it. I'll show you how to cut up some stuff. We're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, thank y'all for coming. Got something special for you. All right, so the potatoes are going in this. The bell peppers are going in this. And the onion is going in this. And the baby carrots going in this as well. Let me show you how to mise en place. Now bell pepper. This is the best way to cut it at an angle down. Leave all the seeds and everything you're not going to eat. Then, got my utility knife. I don't like this white stuff that's in here. So you just very carefully go in, cut that out. All right. Even that a little bit, like I'm petty. I'm petty, don't judge me. Just cut that white part out. You don't need it, it's pretty without it. So yeah, beautiful peppers. And then another show. Let's do the rest. Here's how we're gonna come up after that. So you kinda of want a little big kind of chunks because we're baking it, so these peppers are gonna end up soft. Just lay it flat like that. Make sure you always hold your knife up against your knuckle. And just kinda of thick cut julienne. Like that. About that thickness, that's pretty good. And then just give it a rough one or two chops, right? That's kind of what I'm going with. Not nothing crazy. And then these, like I said, uh, these are going. Now the onion. And I want the onion kind of thick chopped too. Like I said, it's going to cook down. You know, it's gonna be baking in the oven, so just give it a rough chop like that. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. So we're kind of looking at pieces like that, right? Easy enough. And like I said, the baby carrots, we're just gonna leave them like they are. Sprinkle them right on it. Now that we got that good stuff. I got the oven preheated or preheating to 400 degrees, right? So uh, let's go ahead and get this seasoned up here. Uh, this is going in the oven by itself. 
for 30 minutes on 400 degrees after we got to oil it and then season it. Show. I got some, a uh, little bit of sesame oil uh, left over here. I'm gonna use that. Sesame oil is an amazing oil. It don't have a, as high as a smoke point as, uh, let's say avocado oil, but it is an amazing flavor oil. So <clears throat> we're gonna mask that with a little, a little avocado oil as well. That way it's got like a bodyguard so the heat don't beat it up, you know what I mean? Then, we're going in with our umami powder. Umami, oh my gosh, that's so amazing. That's going to make everything savory. We're not using bacon in this, but how bacon gives you a savory flavor, that's what this does. It doesn't taste like bacon, it's savory. Google it, take your time. All right, going in with some garlic powder. And it's, it can take it, don't worry. Going in with a little bit of cumin. Uh, cumin is a is a powerful spice. Do you see my face? Where'd that come from? I think I had gas from. Uh, going in with uh, some oregano. The oregano is great on everything. I mean, really, if you go to Subway, <clears throat> get you a... Uh, all the oregano they'll put on your sandwich. It makes it 10 times better. Going in with some rosemary. I wish I had some fresh rosemary, but I don't. That would have been great in this. So we're doing some rosemary. Because it should do you right. Going in with some thyme. Does everybody got time for thyme? Thyme just freshens everything up. Don't everybody wish they had more time? See what I'm saying? That's how that works. Going with some time. All right. <clears throat> Going in with some uh, smoked paprika. Smoked. That's why it's red. It's high as red. Something. All right. Smoked paprika. Gives it that good smoky flavor. And... Oh, I'm jiggling like a stripper. <clears throat> All right. Uh, smoked paprika. Okay. Now we've got our friends incorporated. Uh, Need to get your hands dirty or get your gloves dirty. Ready for surgery? Get in there and just get that all a good toss. <clears throat> I know it's just carrots and potatoes right now, but you want to get that seasoning well blended in with everything. Because that's going to determine if you eat a bland potato and the next bite blows your head off because it's like that Doritos chip that's got all the flavor and the seasoning on one chip. You don't want that. So we get everything incorporated. Give it a good mix. Try not to let anything escape. Not that it wants to. It sees what these flavors are going to do. Oh, this is lovely. Man. Man. I miss y'all. Well, I'm glad you're here with me, but I, I like physically miss y'all. I wish y'all could be here. But my trailer ain't that big. I'm just kidding. This apartment ain't that big. But I'll come to your house if you want me to. Uh, I'll cook you up a little something. But I just need gas money to get there. So if you want, you can hit my cash app down below. Uh, leave me a dollar or two. I ain't begging, but it'd be cool. That way I can afford groceries to show you how to make y'all something else in the future. But now this is going to be lovely, y'all. <clears throat> just biding my time. There we go. Got it well and incorporated. Look what y'all, y'all let me forget the salt and pepper. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? Can't have a good dish without salt and pepper. And be uniform with it. And it's, uh, it's a lot of potato potatoes, 
bland as potatoes. So you want to make sure you get them well seasoned. Get the pepper in there. Ah, oh, smell that. That smells good. Smell it. All right. What we're gonna do too, let me get rid of this glove for a second. Anyway, check out what I found out in the store, y'all. It's chipotle pepper puree. I don't know if y'all can see that. Chipotle pepper puree. And uh, I love smoke flavor. And however I can get it naturally. Oh, oh my gosh, that smells delicious. It looks thick too, but that smells delicious. Oh my gosh, I almost spilled it, man. I almost gave y'all some. But it says, shake it up. Okay, it's a little liquidier than I thought. Did I have to shake that shit anywhere? Yes. Spoon some of this in the mix. Oh, I've never done that. I've made this dish quite a few times, and I love it too. It's amazing, easy, and quick. And, uh, oh, but I ain't never did this with a Chipotle. Gosh, dog, gosh, dog. Yeah, let's try it a little more. Yeah. yeah. Let's get that Chipotle mix, a good mix. Get it all up in there, incorporated with everything. Get it. I want Chipotle to touch everything. Oh my gosh. Now, I heard the oven, uh, the oven's ready. So, y'all and the oven is just waiting on me. And I'm sorry. But I'm the kind of person, if I put butter on some bread, I'll, bitch. If I put some butter on some bread, I want it to touch every piece of crust. Like, my butter's gonna cover the whole bread evenly. You're gonna get flavor in every bite of my shit. Trust me. Oh, you motherfucker. All right, <clears throat> now, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see this, but now we got that Chipotle adobo on everything. That looks beautiful. All right, we're gonna throw this in the oven. Let me clean it up here in the dirty kitchen. Let's throw this in the oven for 30 minutes for the first time. 30 minutes. And as soon as we pull it uh, out of the oven for the first time, I'll see you again. All right, the first 30 minutes is done. We took it out of the oven. Now we just wanna, now we just wanna stir it. You can feel the, no, ow. So you can feel it getting a little bit softer. You just wanna make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom. We still got a good bit of grease, or grease. We still got a good bit of oil in there. And now, now we're going in with some more goodies. Uh, let's see. All right, we got our onion. We're going in with a whole onion. That uh, incorporated, chopped up a little bit. Just a little bit. It'll mix up and once it warms up, it'll start loosening up. Then we're going in with our peppers. We got uh, red, yellow, and orange. So get them all incorporated in there. Yeah, we can use all of them. All three peppers. Be careful, this bitch is hot still. Don't forget your oven mitt. Get all that up in there. Hey, hey, hey. Everybody join the party. We're gonna have a good time. What the hell? Going in with our mushrooms. And like I said, these mushrooms have been, they're pre-chopped. Some of them are huge. So I'm just gonna just kind of get those in there, and the bigger ones, 
Just go on and break them up with your hand. Don't be nothing. All right, get those up in there. And the mushrooms, see it's good. I don't want the mushrooms in there for the whole hour in the oven either because you don't want them to dry out. But onions are 80% water. So you do want to cook the moisture out of them. So you can get that good mushroom, deep mushroom flavor without just a soggy, you know what I mean? That's why mostly people don't like mushrooms because they ain't never had them cooked right. But just put them in the oven for 30 minutes and this mix here, hey, they're gonna lose that water and they're gonna intensify the delicious flavor. And you'll see, right? Get close to the capacity of this pan, which is perfectly fine. We want, we're gonna have a lot of, since this rub's going away, we're gonna have a few other people eating on this too, probably. So it's good we're gonna share. Now I got uh, some Azar's original smoked sausage. I don't know if you ever had these. These are delicious. Cause I'm gonna try to de-skin these. Take the, take the shell off, or the hull shell hull. Take the casing off of your sausage. And uh, look how easy it comes off. So take the casing off, it'll be a lot softer of a sausage. And when this cooks over this, you'll see you'll see how I lay it on top of everything. All the sausage is gonna be on top of all this. As it's cooking, the grease from the sausage will seep into the potatoes and the veggies, the veggies, and oh man, this is gonna be delightful. I said it. So I got the casing off of this now, and you just you just break it apart. Nothing fancy. You just break it apart, sausage, with your hand. Do it with your hand so it's not so uniform with cutting. You don't want pieces. Just get this, you know. And just put them all over the top. All right, so like I said, uh, break up your sausage. It's a lot easier if you take the casing off. And uh, when you take the casing off, the the oil and the grease and the sausage that it cooks can render out and get all in your potatoes and vegetables. That's the secret. So we got all that taken care of, right? And it took a minute, so the pan ain't even that hot anymore. But we're gonna throw this back in the oven for the second round of 30 minutes. 400 degrees, 30 minutes. 30 minutes, second round, yeah. Set your timer, don't forget that. It's like a helper in the kitchen that lets you know, hey, time to take the shit out. All right, so we're gonna, once this comes out, I'll show you the finished product, we'll plate and taste, and uh, I'll show you how amazing this is. There it is, fresh hot out of the oven. Look at that, it's beautiful. You see the sausage is fully cooked and the grease is drained down into the potatoes. And Oh no, you get your ass back up here. Oh man. Let's get that mixed in a little bit. Oh, the juice at the bottom, y'all, from the, from the sausage leaking into the onions and the onions and Mushroom, <laughs> I almost forgot what I was in it. I'm staring at it. The mushrooms and the peppers and the onions. Oh my gosh. It, oh, you see that smoke? Oh, if you could smell it, that is delicious. I just did that to get so y'all can see me. This is delicious looking, smelling. All right, here it is out of the oven. Uh, what y'all don't know is as I was stirring it, it seems. Uncle Billy might have overcrowded the pan a little bit. It's not a bad thing. More is better, right? When it's this, when it's gonna be this delicious, more is better. But anyway, me over the crowding the pan like that, uh, the potatoes didn't get as soft as I would have liked, right? Now look at them. Uh, wonderful. So. What I did was I ended up putting the whole thing, after I stirred it back up, uh, you know, after the sausage was on top, cooked the sausage, juice got in there, everything. The potatoes were still a little more al dente than I liked. So I put it back in the oven for another 20 minutes. 
nothing wrong with that. Like I said, I just overcrowded the pan so the potatoes couldn't get the heat they needed. No problem. Put it back in the oven, 20 minutes on 400. And now everything is juicy and soft and wonderful and succulent. I don't know how to spell that word, but it fits right there. Succulent. And then, oh, you bitch. Had an escapee. Uh, so now what I'm going to do, <clears throat> last thing, last thing. I know I keep playing with this because I, I just like to make videos. I like to, I like to share with y'all. Um. Uh, these wonderful dishes that I create. What I'm gonna do now is just for the just for the fun of it, I'm gonna take some cheese. I'm gonna spread it all over the top of this. And I'm gonna put it in the back of the oven. But this time, I'm gonna put it on broil because everything's already cooked and incorporated. I'm gonna just cover it with cheese. The broil is in the oven, the broil is just that top burner, right? And that's just gonna melt the cheese all over the top into all this delicious goodness. And I'm wasting cheese. Uh, and you don't have to put cheese if you don't want to. I questioned if I wanted to or not, but I love cheese, and this is gonna make it even more amazing, and why not? This is for my buddy Rob. Rob Hubbard, this is for you, sir. Which I'm gonna get, <laughs> get me some too, but I'll give you the majority of it. And we're using the, we're gonna use the whole bag. Why not? Why not? We'll use the whole bag. And this is amazing, this is three cheese. Uh, it's Monterey Jack, Colby, and cheddar cheese with cream cheese. I don't know how they can call it three cheese when they just stated four, but it's got cream cheese in it, I think, uh, so it melts better. Because supposedly it says a creamy melt three cheese. So we'll do that. Get everything just spread out evenly. You don't have a mound of cheese in one place and then other places ain't got cheese. Just make sure it's even. And that's not bad. Throw it back in the oven, like I said, under the broiler. So this is only gonna take two or three minutes. Not even two minutes, probably. This is gonna melt that cheese on top and it's gonna be beautiful. Oh, missed a piece. No, I didn't. Mm. Oh my gosh. Oh, what have I done? Oh, that, that's wonderful. Oh, that is wonderful. I told you, not even two minutes. Look at it. Oh, that's way good. One more thing. I pre-chopped up some of this parsley, so we gotta get rid of it before it goes bad, right? Like I said, Uncle Billy likes to get butter on all the parts of the bread. So let's, let's take a pretty picture, shall we? All right, let's get a, let's get a dish of this here. We'll get a place so we can do a taste test and I can show you how good this is. Oh my gosh. So just dig right in the middle. Everything's cheesy and mixed up and good and we get some mixer, we get some cheese and everything that's incorporated with it. Oh my gosh, look at that cheesy goodness. Look at the redness on the spoon. Look at the juice. Y'all see the juice? Good juice. The juice and that juice is just gonna resonate and marinate and it's gonna be so much better tomorrow like today it's gonna be amazing but like I've told you before when you do an incorporated dish like this to where you have multiple ingredients in the same pan with juice and flavoring and seasonings 
in the refrigerator, it just marinates and makes everything so much better. And it's already cooked, so when you reheat it the next day, oh, it's so much better. Which is, doesn't take anything away from the night you made it. But you know what I'm talking about. Like, if you ever made spaghetti the next day, why does it taste better? If you ever made meatloaf, why does it taste better the next day? Even though it was great, you get my point. Anyway, so we got us a plate here. We're going to do a little taste test. Oh, my goodness. See, it is, it is hot. That, that plate's hot. Let me get some cheese. What's this cheese got? Oh, uh, we got some mushroom. We definitely want some potato. Definitely want some sausage. Ooh, that's a good piece of sausage. Hey, hey, hey. Don't pick on me. This is just hot. You... Don't blow on it if you want to. Chipotle, the Chipotle sauce we put it. Ooh, that's amazing. That's got a good, oh, it's got just a hint of heat to it, but it's got the smokiness of the Chipotle. Oh, you can taste the onions, the garlic, the sauces, of course. Oh, the, let me get a baby carrot. I think I missed the carrot. Hold on. Mmm. Oh, that's so sweet and delicious. Mmm. I'm sorry. I said that is so sweet and delicious. That baby carrot. That is so soft and... Oh, that's so good. Oh my gosh, y'all. The peppers. Please, please try this. Try this recipe. Let me know what you think. If I'm wrong, I'll stop. I'll stop cooking. I'll stop doing videos. I'll start telling jokes and some shit. If you try this, put in it what I put in it, and you don't like it, I'll give up. I'll send you this jacket. I'll send you this chef's coat. But you gotta be honest. You gotta be honest. You gotta show me you cook this, and you taste it, and let me see a sour stank, on, stank look on your face. And if I see that, you can have this, this jacket, and I'll quit cooking whatsoever. But... That's not gonna happen. You put this stuff. Oh my, oh my God! It's like Christmas in my mouth, y'all. <laughs> my taste buds are opening new presents. Oh my gosh! I just, I keep the flavor notes keep hitting. They keep it. I ain't took a bite in a minute. Last bite I took was just a carrot. I'm getting new flavors just popping. Oh my God! Okay. All right, well, cheers. Mmm. <laughs> oh, that mushroom. Oh, that mushroom. Rob. Rob, I know you're going to see this video, buddy. This is going to take everything in my power to give this to you. I know I made this for you. <laughs> I know I told everybody I made this. <sighs> Dog. Dog. At the end of the day, we're going to miss you, brother. We are. Uh, I've enjoyed getting to know you, being your friend, and working with you. You're a good dude. We're going to miss you. This is for you. I'll give it to you tomorrow. Uh, everybody else, thank you so much for coming back to my kitchen and checking out what I was cooking. Uh, today, Billy be cooking some amazing thing for a really good friend of mine. And... Uh, I love y'all. You know I love all y'all. And I'll see you soon.